Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 desktop tutorial for beginners on how to understand your chart of accounts. Okay, my name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Thanks for joining me. First things first, hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to build these subscribers. The more subscribers I get, the more I get these videos out, and I think they really do help a lot of people, whether you're a bookkeeper, a business owner, somebody else that uses QuickBooks, uh, a lot of people that we help out. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. You can sign up for a couple of free videos over there where I talk about the three biggest mistakes that most people make in their QuickBooks uh, files and the ways you can avoid them. All right, so let's get started. One of the biggest questions I get in QuickBooks is what is the chart of accounts? What's it made up of? Why do I need this, et cetera? So this goes back kind of the core to the core of accounting and accounting basics. Now QuickBooks is great because it really hides the fact that you're doing accounting, you know? So when you enter a bill, when you do an invoice, when you, you know, make a deposit, whatever you do and you do it in QuickBooks, accounting is kind of done behind the scenes. So you're really not seeing the the underlying accounting that's happening. But there are some core things that really helps you understand what's going on in QuickBooks uh, so that you get, you know, if you have a basic understanding of some of these accounting concepts, you're really going to understand, more fully understand where these things are being recorded, you know? So instead of just saying, okay, well, I'm going to enter a bill and that's it and I pay it, well, what does that do? Okay, so you know, if you enter a bill that increases your accounts payable, it may increase your expenses. And a lot of times when, when our clients, they go to the bank and, you know, they, they're trying to get financing, maybe a line of credit, it really helps to understand your financial statements. And so understanding the chart of accounts is really going to help you understand the foundation of accounting. Okay. So a chart of accounts in accounting, we're going to go to it right here. We're on the home screen. We go to the company drop down menu. You're going to see uh, this option down here, chart of accounts. So when you start a chart of accounts, or let's say you start a new QuickBooks company file, your chart of accounts, you, you can choose an industry and say, okay, I'm in this industry. It's going to give you a very basic chart of accounts. And the chart of accounts is just a listing of all the accounts that you're going to use in QuickBooks. Okay, so you can see here, you've got the, your bank accounts, you've got you know, with these other current assets, we'll talk about that in just a second, fixed assets, liabilities, et cetera. And then you have all your income and expenses. All right. So it's just a listing of everything. So if you have seen a financial statement, so you've seen a profit and loss statement or a balance sheet, all those different accounts listed on there, those all come from your chart of accounts. This is just a listing all in one place where you can see these things. So you start up your QuickBooks file, you've got your chart of accounts, your basic one, you're going to build on this over time, okay? So as you use QuickBooks, you're going to be building and adding accounts, making other accounts inactive that you don't need or don't use. You may merge some accounts, et cetera. And it's going to be built over time. Now. A couple of quick tips about your chart of accounts. One, you really want to make it as tight as possible. Now, what I mean by that is you want to make it short and sweet and to the point. You don't want to have 8,000 accounts because then when you go to print a profit and loss, it's going to be 10 pages long and no one's going to be able to look at it and read it. You know, especially you, if you're trying to run your business, you cannot have an eight page even a two or three page profit and loss or balance sheet is too long. You really want to try to get it condensed. Now, the best way to do that is to create sub accounts underneath some of these main accounts. All right. So if we look down through this chart of accounts, you can see we've got prepaid expenses is a main account. Prepaid insurance and prepaid subscriptions are sub accounts. Okay. So if we go down, you'll see again, payroll liabilities, we've got sub accounts under there. So this is the main account. These are all sub accounts. And this is especially important when you have it under income and expense. You see, we've got construction income as one main account and then all these sub accounts. So when you do pull up a profit and loss in QuickBooks, let me show you here. We go to company and financial, we go to profit and loss. You can see construction income has all these sub accounts and this is not too long, but you know, it's kind of long, it looks a little cumbersome. You can do one of two things. Okay. So you can, um, we can go up here to say collapse rows and it's going to con consolidate all these things and collapse those. You can expand it and you can just do these arrows and make it a little bit shorter. Okay. 
So that's kind of the importance of creating these sub accounts. Now, so you're going to have your main accounts as these main categories like insurance, uh, you know, prepaid expenses, construction income, you can see automobile expense, uh, you know, interest, payroll expenses, and then the sub accounts are going to be the detail underneath there. Highly, highly encourage you to do that. Okay, so now let's take a look at what the structure of this chart of accounts. First of all, it's going to start with everything from up here, the very top down to the equity accounts right here. These are all your balance sheet accounts. And I always tell people a balance sheet is you, you think about it like a house. So if you if you buy a house and now it's worth three hundred thousand dollars and you have a loan on it of two hundred thousand dollars, you have equity of one hundred thousand dollars. Just the difference between the two. That's what a balance sheet is. You have a certain number of assets, which are the bank accounts here all the way down to other assets. Those are your assets. And if you subtract the balance of all your liabilities, that's going to give you your equity. All right. So very same, same concept as a house and the equity you have in a house, except it's a business. There's a lot more moving parts. So a lot of times people get very confused at what that means. So in general, you want to have a positive equity in the business, just like a house. If it's underwater, if it's worth, worth less than your mortgage, you're underwater on the house. If you have negative equity in the business, you're underwater in your business. So you really want to shoot for that positive equity. That's really how we try to guide our clients is to get to that point. All right. So then down below this, you've got income, cost of goods sold and expenses. That is your profit and loss. All those accounts are your profit and loss. And so a lot of times I get this question of, OK, well, why do I have balances on my balance sheet, but nothing here on my profit and loss? The reason for that is because there's a concept in accounting. A balance sheet is a snapshot at a point in time and it carries forward year after year after year after year. OK, but a profit and loss resets every year. So you measure it on a certain time period. It could be a month, could be a year, a quarter, whatever it is. And it's always going to change and reset. All right. But the balance sheet doesn't. It carries on. So, for example, cash is not going to reset at the beginning of the year. You have an ongoing balance just because it's December 31st doesn't mean that it goes away. So that's going to carry on. So that's why you have balances on the balance sheet accounts, on the chart of accounts, but not on the profit and loss. All right. So as you are building this over time and as you're adding transactions you're going to be adding accounts and you're going to be you know taking them away making them inactive etc the quickest and easiest way to do that is go to your chart of accounts right click you can either right click or you can go down here and you can go to new so we're going to say right click we're going to say new and you can create a new account okay so you're going to choose is this an income is it expense or is it a fixed asset, bank loan, credit card, or equity? All right. So a fixed asset, let's talk about that a little bit. A fixed asset is an asset, something you buy. So it could be a vehicle, a desk, a computer, a building, doesn't matter. A fixed asset is something that's going to last you longer than a year. So just think about it that way. So is a desk going to last you longer than a year? Probably. So it's a fixed asset. A vehicle will last longer than a year. It's a fixed asset. All right. If it's not, and it's a short term kind of thing. Okay it's going to be an other current asset. A other current asset means it's going to be used up within the next year. Some examples of this, and this gets a little bit complicated, are like prepaid expenses, something like that. Or it could be a security deposit that you have to put down for six months or a year. All right. Something like that, that you still own it. It's still an asset of yours, but it's going to be used up within the next year. That's an other current asset. And then another asset is something that just doesn't fall in either of those categories. It's really kind of a longer term, uh, but not a fixed asset. All right. Could be one of those rent deposits that you have held up with a landlord for like three years, something like that. All right. And then you have these other current liabilities, again, accounts payable and other current liabilities. These are things that you owe people that are going to be due within the next year. Long term liability is going to be some kind of bank financing that's not due for the next year. So it could be a, a building loan, a vehicle loan or something like that. That's going to be a long term liability. All right. Then, of course, you have other income, other expense. That's usually things like, um, you know, uh, interest income on a, you know, a savings account, money market account, just minor things that really are not part of the operating of the business. All right. So we're going to you pick one. We'll say it's uh, let's say that this is an expense item and we want to continue. And uh, if you are assigning numbers to your accounts, then you put in a number. You don't have to do this. You can turn this on and off within the preferences and the account name. We're going to say that this is 
Oh, I'm going to make up an expense here. Uh, we'll say office supplies expense. Okay. There's probably already an office supplies in here, but we'll add that to say expense. So is it a sub account of anything? Well, we can look through here and see if we need to put this as um, a sub account. It doesn't look like it. We could put it as a sub account of office supplies. You can put in a description. You don't have to tax line mapping. This is if uh, you do to use tax line mapping in QuickBooks, and then we want to save and close. Or you can save a new if you want to add another one. You'll see there, I did not add a number, but all these have numbers. So you want to keep that consistent. If you use numbers, assign a number. If not, don't. Okay. Now, if you ever want to make one inactive, you can right click and you can go to a make account inactive. All right. Um, if you have information in there, uh, for, you know, previous transactions, you can't get rid of the account. You're going to have to make it inactive. Okay, so these are the basics of the chart of, chart of accounts. This is something that's going on kind of behind the scenes, but you really need to be familiar with it uh, if you're using QuickBooks to understand a little bit about accounting. Any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University, qbuniversity.org. I'll see you there.